law, the Privacy Act, and one of the fundamental principles of that law was that data collection by government uh, should never impede uh, freedom of expression, freedom of association. So, um, of course, when you have that in the legal background, you say this is a very good principle, but then in the foreground, you have a technique, right? A technique of mapping, of, of networking, of chaining, of linking. Now I understand of hopping. We're down from three hops to two hops. Maybe that's good. Uh, but the technique itself doesn't know the difference between a terrorist and you know a political organizer and presumably could be used equally in both instances. So I think the, the simple answer to your question is that we have a legal principle that distinguishes the two, but whether our techniques are applied to recognize the, the distinction is still critical. So, okay, very good. Another question, please. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to go to you, sir. Yes. Yes, uh, my name is Johan Rambi. I'm asking this question as a citizen. Um, and I think uh, the question is two L's. Um, it's about the necessity. Um, and um, I saw a documentary about uh, uh, two police departments uh, in the United States uh, using uh, real-time intelligence and predictive analysis to use the patterns eventually uh, to to, 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 to use that for activities, yeah, for them to uh, know where possible crimes will, will happen, and then um, in a moment of time, with their um, response to that, the result was that the crimes uh, um, lowered rapidly. As a citizen, you think, okay, that's great, because uh, the purpose is then to, 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 to have more safety for you as a citizens. Um, so why not use that? Uh, the hypothesis of uh, Mr. Rottenberg can be uh, plausible. Um, in the cyber world, it is also true that the cyber criminal has always more time to gather the intel than the defense, than the defender. So I do not agree with you that you say that the police doesn't have, uh, don't have the resources, because they do have that they're also now increasing their resources to have more attention on cybercrime. I think that will also be the trend, uh, just like uh, the, the, the military will do that. I know in the Netherlands we, uh, there will be more cyber resources to the police and to the, to the, to the defense. But why not? Is that something concrete that can, uh, that can happen? Thank you. Um, well, first of all, you're speaking of an American situation where necessity is basically a, a European um, a concept, a requirement from the, the Council of Europe Data Protection Convention. Um, the US has principles that are similar, but they're not called a necessity requirement. With regard to your question about resources, um, in the hypothesis that was mentioned before, gathering all digital um, information all emails worldwide, I really do not see how any police force can have the resources to go through all of that, to filter um, and, and, and make it workable. If um, maybe there is a certain practical scheme that they have in, that, that a police force can have in place, talking of tera and tera and terabytes of, of information and, and filtering through that, you need a very, diff a very complicated system, I think, to filter and, and to end up with, let's say, a handful of, of, of bytes or a handful of documents that are relevant, that are linked to a specific um, criminal investigation. Um, I'm thinking now of, of course, it has been mentioned here a few times before, um, the NSA affair. Uh, an authority as the NSA may have resources. A local police authority in an average city, be it in the US, be it in Europe, I do not think can do that. Good. 
So I think we have time for uh, one brief question. Um, maybe we'll go, I'm sorry, here to Casper uh, Bowden, please. Casper Bowden. Um, last night, Edward Snowden did an online question and answer. And one of the things he said was that now that the NSA has the capability to break into pretty much any computing device, whether it's a mobile phone, a computer, or a router, that this really takes away the justification, any justification for mass surveillance, untargeted, broad spectrum mass surveillance. And uh, without sort of commenting myself on the merits or otherwise of that position, I'd like to ask the representatives of the three, Euro three representatives of European institutions what they think the European implications are for that uh, reality. We know that EC3, the ENISA, and perhaps uh, DG Trust and Security have all taken the position that it's not their job to defend against foreign intelligence agency gathering. Um, a slightly incredible position, but nevertheless, that appears to be the position. So I wanted to uh, get some comment from our uh, European institution friends on what they think about this uh, quantum theory uh, aspect of the Snowden revelations. So if I could just ask our panelists uh, to respond briefly, um, I'll make a comment and then I think we'll conclude. Um, the, we, as an institution, we are in the process of analyzing these matters, so I I'm, I'm cannot make any uh, statement really in this case which will commit our uh, position uh, on this. But uh, on the considerations side, um, something that we are looking at very, very closely is um, that those processing data and that those uh, processing communications are obliged to secure um, this data and the communication against unauthorized access, among other things. And so um, it is a question uh, that we are um, analyzing uh, what the obligations are with respect to uh, third party unauthorized access measures at what scale whatsoever and what can be reasonably expected from communications providers and data controllers to be taken as measures to prevent this. No, thanks. Thanks for the question. Uh, but I think at this stage it's difficult to give any answer on that one. Uh, we are, as, as, as Achim said, we are looking into this as institutions. And uh, this is, amongst others, an issue of access and uh, whether you would like to give the NSA a role like that. So in a moment, I'll pass the mic to Sophie, who will um, answer Casper's uh, question and close the session. I just wanted to add this additional um, comment, because we've actually been um, in this debate in the U.S. on a related program. Uh, where you confront overlapping justifications. Before the NSA matter this year, you know, much of EPIC's work over the last few years was directed toward the removal of the airport body scanners um, in the U.S. airports. And uh, we had an argument that was legal. Uh, it was also with regard to effectiveness. And we were able to establish uh, that as a technical matter, uh, the airport body scanner was n not effective. Uh, in preventing uh, the ability to bring certain things on, onto airplanes. Now, what's interesting, and the reason that Casper's question made me think of this is because uh, the administration had argued prior to our case that this was a critical technique uh, to ensure aviation security. And once we established that it was a flawed technique, they responded by saying, well, in fact, it's part of a layered system of security, which is to imply that by itself it need not necessarily work all the time. It's simply one of several things that is done. And I actually think, uh, Casper, this may well be the question, the answer from the U.S. in response to your question, which is that even though they have the ability to do one, they want the other as well, because as they will say, it's part of a layered uh, system and um, just something to keep in mind.
Yes, so j just a few words from the Council of your perspective. Um, I personally hope that um, in terms of st standard setting at least, the current exercise of the modernization of the convention, uh, data protection convention, will enable to address the question of the exemptions and uh, national security being one of them. This is my personal hope. Um, for the broader framework, we have the European Convention on Human Rights and we have the court, and I think uh, time will show and, and questions and claims have been asked, so I, I can only look forward to, to the decision that will be made by the court in that respect, uh, which I think are very important safeguards and will hold our uh, governments and 47 for the Council of Europe accountable to what they have done or not done to protect not their citizens but the persons uh, within their juris jurisdiction. Um, so thank you very much to all of you for being here this morning. I would like to ask you to thank our panelists for the excellent job uh, they've been doing and uh, applause each of them. Thank you very much. <laughs>